share a YouTube channel as well that you can check out. I think that they do together. Uh, Lambo not even used saying good luck, have fun, right? Like Karsten saying good luck, Lambo not responding. Like there's some some mind games already going on. So it's an explosive matchup for sure. And I think that, you know, this is a, definitely attainable for, for Karsten, but Lambo is definitely the, the favorite, I think, ever so slightly going into it. Well, for now, we should introduce our players in the upper left into the blue. He's playing for the Rebellion. It's Lambo. The King. And also the King, uh, by name, it is Kevin De Koning. In the top, bottom, uh, bottom right hand side of the map, also playing for Rebellion, it is Harston. King versus King. King versus Captain. Yeah, you, you could say that as well. But I think the Koning, I think his last name actually translates to King. I'd buy that. Although, uh, you know, if you think about it, yeah. Right, cats? Koning is king. So the king is Kevin the king. Mm. And on the other side is Lambo the king. They're both for the Shopify Rebellion. They're a casting Archon. I mean, one of the best in the scene at that. I mean, they're just, they're just, they're just insane. Yeah. No, and it, you know, cats, if you think about it, right? On the ship, certainly like on a tall ship in the 1800s in the middle of the hmm. ocean, the captain is the king of his ship. So That's true. it makes sense, right? Captain, king, king, captain, captain, king. King of the Merchant Marines. I don't know. Regardless, Harstam playing pretty well. Uh, there were times <laughs> you talked to the Rebellion players, at least. You talked to Scarlet. She would say, look, okay. Neeb and Harstam are actually, this was like a year and a half ago, are actually the two best PvZ players in the West. They're not Hero, but they're like the two best PvZ players at that time of meta shakeup. Is that true now? I, I don't know. But Harstam, he's had some really solid runs the last 12 months. Yeah, for sure. I mean, he's always been a very intelligent player. He's always been very good at the, at, 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 you know, macro mechanics and whatnot. When Scarlet would say something like that, it is because he, he is a very methodical, uh, you know, player that, that can really solve as well on the spot, right? Like he has very cool micro moments and whatnot, like pretty often. Um, and and yeah, like his macro is, is great, right? Like his unit composition, his decision making is great. He analyzes the game. Both of these players, I mean, analyze the game so very much. It's um it's really it's it's really an awesome an awesome match between the two. Very very intelligent players and we'll see who takes it. Yeah, it's kinda of fun as well. I, I I kind of have long for a while talked about how it doesn't really feel like Protoss has the same level of uh, amount of thought leaders that Zerg and, and Terran have. Like, you know, Terran in Korea, they got Ryung. You got Clem innovating on how to play in the West. You got Pyon doing the same thing. And for Zerg oh, players, wow. you got Lambo, you got Serral, Adept's Shade. They only get a Ling though, and they're not really going to get much more, more than that. But like for the most part, you got Max Pax doing things, you got Hero doing things. And it really hasn't really, you haven't, it hasn't felt like there's as much kind of meta evolution being driven by a, a larger base of Protoss players. But Harstam has been doing things like we, we've been seeing him do, certainly last season, doing a lot of stuff with these early motherships. Uh, kind of hitting blink stalker mothership timings and things we are starting to see a little bit more of that develop which is pretty cool to see again the more players you have like actively changing the way the entire race plays i think it, mm -hmm. i don't know my perspective at least the more likely it is that that race is to succeed because oh well, you know m more minds thinking about more things tend to do better than less minds thinking about less things. that is correct i completely agree with that as the oracle is gonna go in and out only gets one uh one run for his troubles and uh, yeah thought leaders that is an interesting concept to me because like um like like for me personally like in the way that i like to approach starcraft 2 and games in general like i hate the, the hive mind type uh, ideas right like i want to do my own thing and i want to like figure it out on my own and stuff like that but for for many people it is super oh that's rough as one of the oracles is gonna fall and ban and vanish back into the ethers but for, for a lot of people, yeah, they, they 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 prefer to be like, okay, what is the thing that I need to do, right? And and Lambo and Harstam both are are the types of players that are very good with that sort of structure at figuring things out and at, and at making strategies that are sensible and coherent for themselves, but also eloquent enough to pass them over to to you know not just players but also the community and whatnot. And that is part of what's so wonderful about him. Talk about iterating, innovating, doing all those things. Uh, it looks like Harstam actually going to peel, like reach back into the toolbook a little bit, go back and play a build that was popular back in 2018, 20, 2020, I think it was, 2019. 
it's adept glaives certainly yes there are, there are mortals with this as well so this is going to be more of a mid game timing a bunch of glaive adepts and mortals here and he's wait am i i am are you? i yeah. I could have sworn I saw an immortal on production. Clearly, cats, I'm just hallucinating because the robos. <laughs> this is not a second robo, right? This is a first robo on the way right now. I'm just blind and I don't know what I was seeing. <laughs> what What was I looking at? I wish I knew. I wish I knew, Beomov. But that's okay because there is uh, the resonating glyphs that's about to kick in. It is a little bit late of a timing at six minutes in already to be hitting it with, with this few adepts. And already there are bainings being moved on the side of Lambo. So, I mean, it's all down to those mainly connections. If Harstem can find himself into the middle lines and whatnot, he will be in a good position potentially. But with this cluster of paintings, it's going to be very, very difficult to even disengage as Harstem now tries to shade out. Instead, he's going to go for the recoil, trying to shave what, whatever, what, save whatever he can of his army. But it's not going to be nearly enough. I think that was a wonderful defense from Lambo the King. Exactly. Now he's got a ton of lings on the other side of the map. Plus one just about done as well so it's gonna be a cancel on a gateway but more importantly lambo may try to break this game open right now and to be honest he probably could that's a uh, the banelings with the shield batteries it's a little bit hard to really do what he wants we're, we're gonna morph though but more importantly with this plus one done and all these lings on the map and everything lambo oh my, has oh my. the most perfect map control Hearthstone, even if he survives this hit which is not certain certainly not i love the stalker there just in, in the position means that the banelings aren't gonna really bust through even uh -huh. if this does not kill oh, nice. Harstam, wow. which it doesn't really seem like it's wow. going to really nice defense from Harstam, actually. Wow. It's pretty hard for Harstam to go and do anything with this. Show on the map. He's got, like, adepts and banelings are going to knock that down. He doesn't have blink done. So, yeah, Harstam defense. It's a really good defense. Really good. I mean, that was brilliant the way, the way that he did that, just splitting it out. The perfect number of units to soak up those baneling shots. Um, of course, they still do damage. They still, you know, like even supply block and kill a couple of um, pylons here and there, but not really any, you know, you, you would expect it. I would expect with like, you know, the 12 or so Banelings that were, that were on that side of the map so close to his mineral line that some probes would have fallen, but really not the case. So Harstam mitigating damage as best as he could, making, making it work from a very difficult situation after his own attack failed. And uh, now he's he's very much himself bought, bought himself away back into this game, I think, as as uh, Lambo does get a cancel. But on the other side, a juicy clump of drones. Oh. <laughs> Five will fall. Oh, maybe even uh, at least they're going to get on like top it. of this. And uh, there's not enough there to buffer for it to the Archon. Oh, oh I yes. love this. This is actually super cool. Look at how he warped in the Zealots, right? So it, it minimizes the surface area that Lynx can get mm -hmm. on top of the Archon. And that actually allows him to stay, be stable a little bit more. Now, there are a ton of Lynx here. So he's going to be forced to back up in the end. But... That warp in positioning like that, it got him a couple more drones. It got him a little bit more time, allowed him to kill more lings. That's a, it's a, a small lady. thing, but it's super cool out of Hearthstone. It was super cool out of Hearthstone. And now the Lambo is going to be canceling the base yet again. Hearthstone for the first time actually letting his guard down on the defense. He's going to lose 10 probes in the process. And uh, Lambo will also get to clean up here where only two drones will fall to the cell of Rambai. So... Things looking much, much better now for the uh, beast from Germany. You know, technically I tried cats. to visit Lambo. It was impossible. Sorry? Lambo, he's in Munich. Like, mm -hmm. Germany is actually huge. Did you know? Yeah. Got the, uh, like, like, when I look at a map of Europe, I'm like, okay, every country is tiny. But then I was in Germany. It's like, okay, like, I'm in Germany. Lambo's like, okay, you should come visit. I look at trains. It's like six hours. I'm like, yeah, I'm not coming. <laughs> Don't love you it that much, Lambo. Insane. Well, Six hours, yeah, back and forth. Arston also oh. doesn't love Lambo that much right now as he's just getting oh shoved my. in. Good, does a really good job of keeping four of those High Templar alive. Did any die? Didn't get a single High Templar. Nice defense there from Harston once wow. again. And again, the longer this lasts, oh, wow. Harston continues to develop his tech further and further. He's only on, he needs the fourth base, but he's got two Immortals on the way at a time. He's double Robo. He's adding in all these storms, these Archons. And the supply gap is just... It's not all that much. Nine army supply, when we talk about how much better Harstam's army is in a straight up fight than Lambo's is, is a significant deal. But Lambo, he's transitioning, right? Lurker den on the way. A hive eventually here. That's what the that's what the infestation pit is for. Lambo is mm -hmm. developing himself, but he doesn't really have an attack right now, right? He's gonna try to attack once again, but I mean Ling Bane Hydra into this many Archons, into this many that's storms. Tough. This stuff. Yeah. It's, it's really hard. 
he has an attack, but he doesn't have an attack. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's just posturing. I think he's going to look at this army, think of it better, and try to get to the lurkers to be, be before he can make anything else happen. But these are good signs for Harstam, who does miss a force field. Could have gotten a, a good extra 10, 10 links or so if that had landed properly. But not the biggest deal in the world in any case. I do, you know, I don't know who I would be rooting for from these two. Like, I, I really I really think they're two of the coolest people in StarCraft. And it, and it is so cool that they cast together. And last time they were actually casting together and they were uh, messing about for Katowice and whatnot. It was so funny, the conversation that they were having. Because Lambo was like, I could actually be there, you know? Like, I could actually, I could have made it to Katowice. Like, and Harston was like, yeah, me too, man. <laughs> and then Lambo would be like, no, 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 but I could actually. <laughs> <laughs> like I could have actually gone and the first time I was like yeah me too man <laughs> you know like Lambo is definitely like the player that misses out just ever so barely to, to that sort of thing or that usually qualifies for us for Harstam it would be a, a bigger step right like he is more of a well, not like he's obviously an excellent player, but but he hasn't been like uh, co co competing at the highest highest level uh, 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 for for a, for a good chunk of, of time, it feels like, right? Like, sometimes he'll rise and, like, he'll win a, a, a tournament crazily enough, but but it's been a while since then, and uh, and it would be really nice to start here by beating his uh, his other his, his other half, his Harambo half. I mean, in fairness, you talk about Harstim, and you know, maybe he's not. Lambo. Okay, fine. He should have beaten Rainer last season. Like, <laughs> Harstim, yeah, his he's BBC. insane. Yeah, he has insane peaks, for sure. And I... I don't hate his setup in this game. Yeah, lurkers are on the way. We don't have any yet. I know. Big oh. on shot. Six drones go down. Lurker attacks on this the way. Nine good. lurkers are on the way. There's a big counterattack here. Lings and Bane's going to try to find their way into the middle oh. line. That's a hero probe. Big Zella. Well, yes. Yeah, hero probe. East of Thunder. Oh, no. The, the, the lurkers, they're exposed here. He's going to get right on top of them. Yeah. Drop the storm. Yeah, oh, God. It hurts. Ow. Ow. That hurts. All the lurkers are dead. And all of a sudden, Harstam's won this game. Look at that. In a second. Insane. In a second. That was insane. I mean, great, great showing up from the captain here. Kevin the Koning, the, the Blardigan giant. So you got to meet with him close to Blardigan. And uh, yeah, he's an absolute beast. Did you say bless you? Yeah, well, it sounded Marco? like you were saying Vlardigan. Vlardigan? Vlardigan? Something like that. Uh -huh. I don't know. I'm not Dutch. Uh, my, my job here apparently today has been um, talking about how German, peoples want, German people want French bread and getting Mapu mad at me, uh, mispronouncing French words to get the French people mad at me, and um, saying that Dutch towns sound like sneezes and therefore getting the Dutch people mad at me. Um, I haven't done anything to, to make Poland angry yet, so there is that. Um, mm hmm uh, yeah, just just make a speed running the Europeans, making them uh, making them mad at me. It's how that works. Good. <laughs> it is how that works. Man, though, that lots of observers for this one. Mm. All the cool kids are here. So many people rocking the uh, the the Blizzard like community contributor uh, tag is or uh, profile portrait as well, which is awesome. Wish they still did that, but even still. Uh, you know, we got a lot of awesome people here in the lobby. And by the way, those, the way Har like Harston was in a bit of a rough spot, losing his fourth base forever. Ling run by is doing a great job. And then he just catches the lurkers on transition. And if you cut, Lambo was saving a ton of money, right? To go into that. He was at uh, like 180 supply and just saving money to go into these lurkers. And then all of a sudden you go and you're like, okay, you can do that. I'm going to catch him on transition. This money that you've been saving to beat my army is all of a sudden gone. Well, that's a pretty solid way yeah. to... Sorry. Yeah, to be fair, even like even with those lurkers hatching, I think that Lambo wasn't in a lot of trouble. Like to, he would have been hard pressed to get him in a in a good position before Harstem would have, you know, reacted with something like carriers or something of, of the sorts. It's like Lambo was already in kind of a tough position, and Harstem already had a lot of immortals, a good chunk of archons, right? Like the lurkers were always gonna struggle at least a little bit. But but yeah, I mean, catching them like he did is just. Kind of like a freebie. Let's just this just ends the game right here and, and right now. Yeah. Well, we're gonna have yeah. to see if he can move up to game two today. Get to a two zero. We go to game three and Alcyone in the red. Mm. It's Harston. And his opponent playing for the Shopify Rebellion as well, and with a uh, first base at the gold. It is the King Lambo. The thing is, 
yeah, he's gonna go for gas gas pool. I mean, like this is abusable, right? Like Harstem did open for gateway first. He uh, goes for the next for the cyber crack here, but I think the first adept or two still have an opportunity to do something here. I'm not sure how Lambo is gonna look to mitigate for that. Maybe he saves Larva, and makes some circlings here, but he's not even doing that at the moment. So okay, he yeah, go on. I guess here's my question. I feel like when I see Zerg players so do risky. this. This is mm -hmm. almost, I mean, you're, you want to mine out of the gold. Great. Absolutely. But I feel like I see this more than anything oh. else. And yeah. this is just trying to bait the Protoss into dealing with it. And then you kill their counter, right? This, uh, I see like this yeah. Dark does this Max Packs a lot. Max Packs will go Glaives as a response. And the Dark's like, that's fine. Your Adept's in the middle of the map. I'm going to catch him out. I'm going to kill him. That's that, right? This is, it's not so much that you want to mine out of this base. It's that you want to force a certain response out of the Protoss player that then you can kind of hard counter. I don't know if that's here in this in this matchup in these mind games, but like on this map in particular, how no. exposed the gold base is, it, it does feel like it's something where you're, you're, you're asking the Protoss to do something rather than proactively doing something for yourself. Yeah, but you but you have to also account for what the Protoss can and cannot do, and how they're gonna do it, right? So like for in in the case of Lambo right now, he made six circlings, but the rocks are not even down yet. So the, this adept is kind of kind of does have some free reign here to be annoying for a little bit. And, and if there is a second one being in corner booster and almost out, then the, then it's gonna arrive before before link speed is even halfway done, right? So there is an opportunity here to poke and prod if you're harsh them. Like when you take a base like that, like like this at the gold, like if you're very very confident and if you could, can do things perfectly, then then sure. But otherwise, look at this. This is this is already good taxing on the side of uh, of Harstem, and that's eight circling. So the thing is, like again, like you, you could like. What I saw Bly do, for example, is take a base like this, but then go for like, a, I want to say like a 16 or 15 pool, and then save up like a lot of larva, right? And, and then uh, and, and then move out with like six links and try to apply pressure or, or try to um, be out early enough that you can counter attack as the adept is going in, and then you do more damage on the other side, force your opponent to pull back. Something like that is, a, is an option. Or going for a pool first or a gas pool or something like that is an option, and then, you know, the adepts can't go out on the map. The way that Lambo did it, it's kind of like min maxing as much as he, as he could, but he is paying a little bit for it. It is, certainly, but like if we talk about where Lambo is taking a page out of, right, in terms of how he decides he wants to play or doesn't want to play. Uh, ooh, he gets the pro, but nice. Uh, again, good job there, Harston, just putting himself into a corner. Uh, I, I see Dark do this a lot. I see Bly do this a lot. And if I'm going to say, okay, who is who is Lambo maybe drawing some inspiration from? He obviously could be just drawing inspiration from himself. Yeah, he gets the third probe. But on which side of the of the aisle he's gonna? I think it's more on the dark side, right? Where this is, yes, this is gonna unlock some aggressive options, but this is much more of a macro play than this is. I'm going to flood speedlings and cancel your third base or whatever. And I gotta say, I am really surprised that we're not seeing a. I mean, I guess this is a decently timed twilight. Certainly, we, we might see glaives out of this. But I mean, yeah, glaives aren't gonna. Yeah, this is too late for glaives. So I am I'm a little surprised to not see Glaives as a response. The third, the gold base is so far away from the natural that Adepts can cycle a little bit more. But I guess this is kind of the, I know that you know that I know that you know that I know that you know what's going to happen. So I'm not going to go for Glaives because you're going to have the counter to my Glaives. And that's just a way to lose. To, that's just a way to lose the game. Yeah, I think I think at this stage it's more like yeah, I know that you have a lot of creep spread and and you know it's going to be difficult to reach. That's just one of the bases that he has, and that is uh, basically what it is, right? Like, um, I I don't think, for example, that you that you take the like I don't think that it's a like a like a like a first thing to say that you take the gold base to bait your opponent into doing something about it. It is worth for your opponent to try to do something about it because the gold base is otherwise powerful. And on this particular map, it is relatively short of a, of a travel distance once you mine the, the proper mineral. So it's uh, it, it's definitely a good situation that Lambo finds himself in, despite the fact that Harstem did kind of slow him down a little bit and didn't invest very much into trying to kill this gold base. Right? Like as a result, Lambo has pretty good map presence, pretty good creep spread. A very good economy early on, um, but the only way, the only part that can be a little bit deceitful about gold, gold bases like this is because you need less drones to mine them. Sometimes you end up with with lesser drone counts, right? Which seems to be maybe kind of the case here for Lambo. So he's gonna want to have to, he, he's gonna uh, want to do something with his with his army here soon, or or else once that gold base starts mining out, which it should soon, 
it's uh he's gonna be in a difficult uh, economic position Ooh, nice around oh. here on the lings there's no there's no shield there's no stasis traps right oracles are gonna turn on their pulsar beams but only one of them has really sufficient energy what i think is worth pointing out here as we talk about this game harstim no robo right very late forge he really wanted to get blink pretty much as quick as possible to put pressure on on the edge of creep and maybe start to try to knock this gold base down now lambo He's got plus one melee on the way. He's got a ton of lings, plus one melees, yeah, and like 20 seconds out, but mm. 15 seconds out. Fine. <laughs> Fine, StarCraft. Tell me that I'm wrong. But more importantly here, right, he has the, he's kind of anticipating this a little bit. So even as Harston wants to get aggressive on top of this, the fact that we're looking at a gold base and we have this money and you need less drones, which means more of your larva spent on building lings and roaches and things like that, means that this aggression that Harston's committed to, because again, his tech is delayed. Plus one attack, delayed, robo, delayed, uh, charge, slowed down, no archons, right? I think we just saw the Templar archives complete. All of this means that Harstim wanted to get something done with this. And, you know, Cats, he hasn't gotten that done yet. Ling's on the right side. They're not going to get a ton. But Lambo's got his fifth pace on the way. Yeah, uh, but not very many drones to populate it with. I guess now he's up to 72, so he has been making a few uh, more here and there. But 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 it's not like Harstam uh, is lacking the real estate to saturate and kind of keep up. He's only three workers behind, so the economies will be very, very similar for both of these players. And um, yeah, I mean, one from the Netherlands, one from Germany. And when you were saying delayed, 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 I just had... PTSD from when I was in Germany, that is what all the trains are all the time. Every single train is delayed, cancelled, delayed, cancelled. In the Netherlands, they're right on time all the time, so we'll, we'll see if that applies here to this matchup as well. Well, for right now, Harstam seems to be right on time, defending everything he has got to. Lings on the left side being annoying, but not getting much done. Stalkers, sentries on the right side, defending their oh. zealots, doing a nice job with shield batteries means the bailings are not going to get anything. That's like two pros, not really enough. So Harstam again, trying to survive into this mid game. He's going to have to cancel the fourth base though. That's big. It is a big deal. I mean, Harstam Lamb is on five bases. Yeah, you know, one of them is a gold. It's going to mine out very quickly. In fact, it's already mostly mined out. But, yeah. you know, there, there is that. Even still, it's five bases to three, 75 workers to 73, sure. But now the question becomes... Yeah, that was a very important uh, base. I think we can look around and see what the saturation looks like for Harstam. I'm not sure if it's uh, too bad. But yeah, a little bit of forest saturation. It is natural. Some idle probes near his, uh, his, his the base he's trying to establish. And some oversaturation in his main, right? So all of those probes could be mining uh, perfectly efficient had this base not gotten cancelled. And if, and if that happens again, that's going to exacerbate the issue to where Harstam is going to really struggle to recover. Nice morph that on to two of the high jumpers that didn't have energy anymore and another one to save those two as well and now Harstam can pour in with the rest of his army but but it's gonna cost him i think another cancel here as the base will actually just get killed no cancel this time around and lambo continues to press on forward but he doesn't really need to he has already traded the units that he needed to add the front for some splits with the banelings and this looks excellent for the German to try to uh, close things out. Yeah, and no, a big deal there. The Banley's coming in from the middle of the map. I don't know if that was a rally or whether that was just like a happy accident, a happy little tree, whether it was probably, we're going to say it was intentional from Lambo. But he just sandwiched the High Templar. They didn't get all their storms off. They just kind of had to sit there. And even as I was looking at that, I was like, man, you know, Lambo seems like he's bathing in the storms here. It just really seems like he's just taking so much damage. He had too much. The roaches were tanky enough. The lings and banes that came in from enough sides that Harstam. Not only, right, did he lose the base, not only was it killed, not canceled, he lost 14 probes on top of it. So now Lambo, he's on six bases now as we take a look at things. He's also up 16 probes or 16 drones. He's got himself in that nice position. Now, this army is highly okay. technical from Harstam. It's got a ton of storms, archons, immortals, blink stalkers, plus two's done in eight oh, seconds. Wow. The storms evaporate all the lings. But the supply differential, it's a 30 supply differential. So yeah, you know, Harstam, you're defending your fourth base. You really need to. Can you defend your... You absolutely can defend your natural. Who am I to judge the great Harstam? Nice defense on both sides. Very nice defense. I mean, the, the beauty of that storm on the circlings as well. This is the type of... the type of. Oh my God, please, not as I'm praising you. This is... I was going to say, this is the type of thing that, that I really like seeing from Harstam because... Because he makes decisions that are difficult to see, right? Like you, you, you look at a clump of roaches, a clump of circlings, and more often than not, most circ players, certainly myself, 
or mo mo most uh, uh, players that are looking onto any clamp to to execute any sort of AOE, like 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 Storm, for example, you would go for the biggest clamp, right? Like you would shoot at most of the roaches. But Hearthstone goes for the links because he knows that he has three immortals right behind that are gonna shred the roaches as soon as as those links are are dealt with. So. Decisions like that are, are always mind-boggling to me, like mind-blowing from from uh, from players like like him. But at this point in time, he's just gonna have to run away his perks and try to mitigate damage from these mainlings. On the other side, there's a little bit of a counter attack as well, but it's gonna be dealt with uh, just fine. So Harstam does establish for base Beowulf. Maybe it's doable. Uh, he's you like the last three minutes or so? Maybe his defense has been immaculate. Yeah. He did lose the fourth. That didn't feel good. It was a great attack from Lambo coming out from sides. Man. But he's on 72 probes right now. He's got four bases. Yeah, Lambo has six. But again, that gold base is just about mine now. There's not a lot of money there. But this mm. is not a game that Harsten's going to be able to win on this immortal Archon Storm timing that we saw in game number one. Running across the map. I think you're right. Even if he doesn't catch all the lurkers, he's still in a pretty solid spot. This time, first of all, Assign is a massive map. Hard to run across the map and just go kill your opponent like that. Second of all, Harstam has taken enough damage and Lambo has enough of the map on creep. He's got his lurkers done. He's maxed out. Like he's in a solid spot here where Harstam has identified that this has to be a transition. So plus one air attack on the way, adding an additional Stargates. I want to say I saw a fleet beacon. Yeah, there's a fleet beacon here. And oh, I love this cat. This is not for carriers. This is maybe a mothership. We'll see. But he's adding in Tempest on top of this, this mid game setup, because in part, there's going to be this timing. Yeah, there's a Spire on the way, but there's going to be this timing where there's not a lot of anti-air for Lambo and five Tempests. They one shot pretty much anything a Zerg has. Yeah, certainly bird alerts anyway, which is going to be the more important thing to look out for. If you're a Hearthstone, you feel stable on the ground. You cannot really lose uh, on the ground very easily right now. So Tempests make a whole lot of sense. They have very low damage output, but they have uh, an insane range and poke so if you're lambo you gotta identify that and start looking for counterplay in the in the shape of vipers or something of the sorts because otherwise harstem is just gonna tickle you to death yeah that is although <laughs> sometimes you can tickle someone to death and then unfortunately your fingers get too tired before they die which we've seen happen i think back to classic for Cyril, i think it was back in gamers day where he's in this great spot and he just run zealot into his a zealot into his opponent's face for like twenty thousand minerals lost or something insane he's like okay you know you've exhausted yourself you've lost There's the game but, yeah tempest are out which means that the lurkers can't stay around for forever gotta push back and the zealots on the north side they're not gonna kill this base there's enough of a response from lambo they are gonna distract him they're gonna force him back home five corruptors on the way cat five yeah. corruptors especially when we got plus three stalkers here with blink I've, you need a little bit more. Five Corruptors, not enough here. Yeah, you certainly do. I mean, he just sees the, 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 few very, the very few Tempests, and he doesn't really have supply for anything else at the moment. So I'm sure he'll start adding Corruptors as he can. But like you said, it's not enough for the time being. As Harstan now presses on forward, looking to take his own gold base, perhaps as a result. The War Prism will be dealt with. And a nice split of his army makes it so that uh, Lambo can't really effectively find a, a uh, reprieve to suicide these units but instead he has to uh, trade them for basically nothing so nice trades there for Harstem. obviously lambo wants to get rid of those units but you would rather trade than you know them just die all right so yes let's think about Harstem's army right now he's going to take the fifth base to the gold finally so he's starting to develop his army a little bit more does Harstem have a timing right now? I, I kind of feel like he does. He's got a powerful ground arm. He's got this mothership for cloaking. He's got five Tempests, I'm assuming. Yeah, he's got four Tempests, so not quite enough for one-shotting. But, you know, enough here. Stargast Bling on top. Ooh, oh, that's into Lurker's Finds. That doesn't feel very good, but he's going to still knock down a lot of these Corruptors. I... Okay, that attack on the north. Is he trying to free up supply? Because that doesn't feel very good. Is actually... Can you still hear me, Cats? Am I... Okay. Not me. Game paused. Oh. It's me. I think I died. I should it is, leave. It is not you. It is uh, someone else. But it cut out. Like, like I stopped hearing you. So oh, my weird. internet must have died for a second. Unless, you, unless your account it's is... Mapo said it's me. Unless your okay, account cool. is Jesus. Uh, I think you're fine. I am Jesus. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's Jesus. Jesus, not, not Jesus. But yeah. Oh. Okay, if it happens again, I'll just leave. Right, yeah. So anyways, I like... It, is this Harstam trying to throw some of his army away? Like, was this an attempted uh, counterattack? I don't really know. It was awkward. He lost a bunch yeah. of immortals in that fight. So we take a look at our battle report here. I mean, it's three dead immortals, Archons, High Templar. 
I, I guess he's replaced. He's, he's rebuilding a mortal, so I'm not really sure what the idea of that attack was on the north side. He got slapped down. And now Hearthstone, he's got his fifth base, certainly, but all that aggression, all that these inroads he was making on the right side of the map, knocking down lurkers and uh, corruptors and things, kind of invalidated by how much he just lost trying to, I guess, I, I guess, knock down this north side base that will not be knocked down will not be knocked out i mean it looks it looks a little bit difficult now for a lambo as harstam is moving out on the map with a very sizable and scary force lambo's looking for counter attacks to try to you know make something happen on, on the on the left flank but um i'm not sure what the best thing that he can hope for is a nice defensive choke here from harstam as well will make it difficult for for lambo to breach that the, the, the high Templar doesn't have energy for storm yet so that's a little bit of a saving grace as units are, are now going to pour into the right but with two Immortals, two Archons, those workers will not be long for this world. And Karstam doesn't even move his main army to uh, to try to help with this. But maybe he could move it forward to try to kill a base or two. Yes, I, so I, we look at this army right now. It's got a mothership. Certainly it's got seven Tempests. So five one-shot lurkers, five one-shot queens, three lords, whatever. Um, but and you get a couple more just to make sure that even if one dies, you still have that burst potential. But it's you want to see more like we got tempest right do you, do you want to i feel like we want to see maybe something a little bit more that's anti-corruptor because right now I, stalkers are going to blink on top i think they did they get a tempest uh no they didn't actually get it got back in time but no storm. i feel like we want to see maybe a little bit more those storms are going to be solid but lurkers still on top and actually i look with the shield battery here they're going to punch through a maybe not every single lurker but a ton of these I, they're going to get every single one nice job there again really good defense and I, you know, I'm talking about maybe I'd like to see some more transitions out of Harstam. Maybe not just more and more Tempest. Lambo doesn't you have any what, Vipers. Like ring? He's got one, he's got one uh, infested that doesn't get much done, but there's no Vipers. Like he doesn't have anything to really dislodge this army. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough for sure. I mean, he does have the, the, the gas bank. Should he want to attempt for Vipers? Obviously it's going to be a, a difficult task as uh, Tempest can shoot from very far away and with the revelation of the oracles it's annoying you have feedback on the high numbers as well so it is difficult what do you say uh oh can you hear me yeah no, i can hear you i didn't i don't think i said oh. uh oh oh <laughs> i just got a oh. message on discord that says oh 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 i think that was uh, there they go anyways oh uh, wow that's crazy i think we're okay like i love this stage from Harston right now again these these tempests are yeah you got vibe you got corruptors but Corruptors can't dive on top of this, not with storms and archons and stalkers yeah. and all that. So he's just going to knock two bases down. I mean, this is a big counterattack coming out of Lambo. I think you his like main is State yeah. of Recall. I, there's not enough here. Harston is maxed out. He's going to knock the gold base down, and he's going to get the right side base as well. So two bases for the cost of one. But there is tech here, right? There's a Robo. There's a Twilight. There are things that you would consider important. But Harstam has to be very careful. If he decides to recall in, certainly that, there's a time where a lot of his units in the air are vulnerable. They can't attack back. Corruptors may try to dive on top of that. But I, I gotta say, especially now that there's these lurkers in the main base. And there he goes. There's the recall. Okay, I was like, yeah. Harstam's it's not really recall. responding. Yeah, it's a, it's a really good recall because he splits his army to where he's only recalling the Tempest. That's all he's gonna need. And he warps in Zealots from behind to, to make sure that the lurkers kind of... Uh, easily escape but if he had recalled more of his army maybe so somewhat carelessly then he would have left one of his bases exposed instead he makes sure that he covers that base with his ground army lambo tries to advance on forward but he's unable to and and instead you have a stalemate here and, and kind of a cleanup on the other side which is really nice for a harston that's already accumulating over uh, nearly eight thousand resources um in in bank so really yeah. really good spot compared to you know, the, the measly 1500 or so that Lambo has to work with. Dude, cats, look at the resources lost. It is 14,000 resources lost in favor of Harstam at this point. <laughs> and again, it, oh, oh wow. man, the lurkers are Jeez, so, Oh, that doesn't feel good. That is oh, so much tough. of Harstam had, or Lambo, he's got a thousand minerals here. Like, he, he's not ah. that rich. Now, the Tempest are exposed, no. and you got to back up a little bit. I, it's, I feel like in this game, again, with the lack of infestors and the lack of vipers, Adding yeah. in a couple of void rays feels like a really good idea. Just to turn on those pulsar beams and kill all the corruptors. Even still, Lambo, he's supply blocked here, lost a bunch Even of overlords, still. overseers. He's got a bank finally, but it's not an incredible one. He's lost so much money. And he's lost multiple bases, right side base, gold base going down. All the drones at this rich gas base are going to fall. Ever so slowly, Harstam is just bleeding them, is bleeding Lambo dry. He is definitely bleeding Lambo dry here. 
It is looking very, very difficult for Lambo. As uh, supply-wise, I mean, he is in a, in a decent position. A lot of lurkers here preventing the advance from the forces on the ground. As Harstam now identifies that there's no overseer, and that's going to prompt him to kind of send his army forward and get rid of a lot of these lurkers. So Lambo will continue to bleed out on the retreat. And uh, now Tempest a little bit exposed. One might fall, but no, no overseer yet again. And Harstem drops another base. I want to say this is like 90%, 95% over. It's tough for Lambo. Yeah, it really does feel like that Lambo. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know why he seems so unwilling to play with spellcasters. I, I don't know if that's lack of coverage with spellcasters. It's not like the it's not like the nerf to bite or the, the buff to, to High Templar went through in terms of just letting you spam out and feedback everything. Oh, careful. So I don't I don't really know what it is, but playing against this army, all right? Tempest, ground, whatever it is, storms, archons, immortals, mothership, playing against this without vipers, without investors, it feels so hard. You, the viper, the tempest, we saw we saw their uh, their acceleration right was changed. So they move a little bit faster. They can move, they can kite better. We saw so much of that. So we're seeing how powerful the tempests are. They can sit on low ground, sit on high ground, continue to just extract value from this game. And yeah, Lambo has put lurkers on that extra base that Lam that Harston is trying to take. He's killed off nine probes. I think that Nexus should probably die. But I haven't seen anything in the last five minutes, Cats, that tells me that Lambo has any hope, really, of taking down this army that Harstam has been able to build. It looks very, very difficult, but here he comes. He's going to try for one last time, potentially. I mean, that, that is not the start that he was hoping for. <laughs> now the Lurkers are all exposed, and Harstam is just going to have an easy time marching on forward, cleaning things up, and this should be it, as Lambo will take a loss here, and Harstam will get the 2-0 and continue on flawlessly in his uh, run so far this season, so very well done. You know, like I was really trusting Lambo to leave already because he usually leaves like way too early. And right now it feels like, you know, like I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll start this pitch and by the time I'm done, surely. But he does have a couple of lurkers here on the bottom right hand side that are wrecking havoc. And he did, or he is trying to establish two additional bases, but Harstam doing the proper as well with the son of Rumbice. And the game is not yet over. I think this no. is one of those things, Casper's like, look, I, you feel better in the state of the game than you actually are. Like, look, I'm, I got lurkers in the main base. I got lurkers in the natural. I got lurkers on his field. I am swarming him. Yeah, I'm knocking down so out. much you of his economy. He doesn't know that Hearthstone's on 5k 3k. <laughs> so it's like, you know, I, I'm killing his economy. I took an okay fight. Not perfect. Like I, I dropped supply. I, I got something out of that fight. I have a bunch of bases. I maybe i can still maybe this is still playable yeah there we go there we go yeah, yeah i want to say I, I wanted to say you just see it play out